the entire point of this video is to eat white chocolate with seaweed. That's it. Hey peeps, Jess here, and for today's entry in the Craft Chocolate Maker series where we talk about really awesome craft chocolate makers, you ought to know, we are taking on Fossa Chocolate. Fossa is Singapore's first bean to bar company, founded in 2017 by Jay Chua, Jaris Chia, and Yelena Leong. And when I think of Fossa, I just think of hawker stalls from sesame to lychee to mushrooms to sake. It's that whole like pan Asian everything in one food court experience in chocolate. The downside, because they're in Singapore, not a lot of the selection does make it stateside, but enough of it does that I have a pretty nice selection of single origin and some really unique inclusions to share with you. And I do mean they have some really unique inclusions, as in I'm going to link above and down below to the shrimp and bonito bar that I tried with Barbie Van Horn of Finding Fine Chocolate a while back. That was an experience. <laughs> so excited to play with new bars. So we're going to start with the Pocketty 70% and I'll put the prices up above because honestly I don't remember how much these cost. I should know. I think it's about $12 to $14. One thing I find interesting here is actually on the back which they're talking about the harvest. Because there was low rainfall and cold nights during the harvest, the flavors are considered very lively. And also this is vegan, gluten-free, and the ingredients are cacao and cane sugar. So the bar is divided into 12 sections, and each one has little teeny tiny dots or lines or swiggles on it. That's really cute, very simple and clean. It smells very musty. I'm getting a lot of muddled notes, not in a bad way, just like a lot of stuff is happening. I can't tell what anything is. Yeah, not getting it yet, but we'll get there. Cheers. Whoa, there's a, a lot of creaminess for a 70. And also almost a citrus acidity and raisins and some woodiness, like everything's happening. Kind of ends on a woody note. It's not tangerine, but it kind of feels like that citrusiness, a little bit of sour. Well, that's good. And there's almost the tiniest hint of vanilla at the very end. Like if you're someone who doesn't like Madagascar and you'd like to have more of an earthiness, but not so earthy that it's whiskey, I would, I would definitely try that. That was a really nice bar. Since the rest of the bars are inclusions, we're gonna kind of go in order of intensity with white sesame last, because I have no clue what seaweed's gonna do to chocolate. All right, so next we have the lychee rose. I have eaten this before, it's one of my favorites. I wanted to have a bar that I knew a fair bit about in here just so I could compare how all the chocolate's been doing. We had a lot of chocolate problems with the warm weather shipping this year, so better to double check. And I get to eat a really tasty bar. Same golden wrapper. Oh, whoa, giant inclusions. <laughs> nice! Wow, oh. I'm just so happy. These are just giant bits of lychee. If I remember correctly, the rose is just straight up in there. The ingredients are cacao, cane sugar, cocoa butter, milk powder, lychee, and rose tea. Okay, let's try this. You just smell the roses immediately. It's like floral. Cheers. This is slightly crumblier than the 70%, but it is so floral. And there's a problem in floral in general that it can become just like eating perfume and be really gross. And this instead, because there's lychee, any overt bitterness, any too much perfume immediately becomes fruity and it is so much better for it. If you want a floral chocolate to go with your tea, this is definitely the chocolate for you. It is just so good, so pretty, and just so balanced. Now, speaking of tea, let's take on the duck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone buys this bar so that they can say, where's the duck? They have the story of the name on the back. The story goes that the farmer, in an attempt to hide the secret to his delicious tea, gave it an unpleasant name and it stuck. And this is a really beautiful bar. I've had it before and I quite like it. It's a very malty bar, so completely different from the lychee rose. <laughs> yeah, I've had a bit. It's very malty. Like this one's been sitting for a bit and the maltiness has intensified. Honestly, it kind of smells like sawdust, like fresh sawdust. Not a bad way, just you'd better not have any negative emotions with sawdust. Cheers. It is malt, then it is tea, and it's like boom, boom. And then sort of the end, you've got this bitter chocolate note. So I'm gently following along. It is intense. It is an oolong tea, and you get that oolong maltiness along with the distinct malt over note. It's also very drying. <laughs> 
it's one where you're someone who has been like, you know, the tea chocolate I've had has not had enough tea. Get this bar and wait a few weeks. I've had this one for a few months now and it is way more intense than when I first opened it. Oh my goodness. The first time it was not drying at all. It was just very malty. And now this, this malt extravaganza with oolong and tea and everything being very intense. Last, certainly not least, this is the white sesame and seaweed. I have not tried this one before, so I'm pretty excited. We've been trying to get our hands on some of their more seaweedy bars for a bit. There was a big thing last year, I think it was, when Korean Seafood Feasts came out, which if you're vegan, don't look it up. It's got two giant honking shrimp on it. So this one, ooh, ooh, I totally forgot, and this has puffed rice in it. So it could be very crispy, crunchy, seaweed, salty, and it's caramelized white chocolate. I am very curious to see how this one goes because caramelized white is already a very toasty biscuity note and you've added puffed rice and then you added seaweed and salt. So there's a lot going on in this little bar. Ooh, really beautiful color. Yeah, I love the deep toasted brown of the caramelized white chocolate. It means they really went for it. And then on top of that, you can see all the seaweed poking through. Yeah, it smells like a peanut butter cookie. Very soft temper, just crumbled in my hand. Probably doesn't like how warm this room is. Cheers. Mmm. It really does remind me actually of the Japanese crackers, senbei, but not soy. You have the puffed rice crispiness and the seaweed happening and the caramelized notes all kind of happening all at the same time. And now I'm just breathing seaweed. So you'd better like seaweed. I'm not really getting that sesame note that I was expecting. Like it reminds me more of eating something of a Japanese style of snack rather than a Korean, which I was expecting from the sesame note. But it's fun. Wow, it just like goes pop, 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 pop flavor wise and just stuff happens and you're like, whoa, what just hit me? I suppose like a leisurely flavor has happened and just no, pop, pop, pop. I need to eat more of that. That being said, I would not bring that to someone to get them to like seaweed. It's a very different flavor combination than just eating nori or gim on their own. This is its own special thing. Those are my thoughts on Vasa chocolate and I hope you give them a try if you haven't before. If not, I'd love to hear all your thoughts and if you think these bars are just a little too weird or up your alley. And with that, I will catch you next time. Later!